everybody, this is Marine with Backpacking with a Hammock. One of the biggest challenges of hiking and camping during the cold winter months is keeping your feet warm. If your feet are cold, your experience in the great outdoor may lead to misery. Any prolonged exposure to the cold may also lead to frostbite. In this video, we're going to look at three tips that are going to help you keep your feet warm in the extreme cold winter months. When it comes to evaluating a boot's warmth, keep in mind the thicker the insulation, the warmer the boot. Thinsulate is probably the most common insulation and proven effective. Primaloft, on the other hand, is lightweight but less durable. Now wool is another great type of insulation. It keeps you warm even when it gets wet. Down insulation is very effective, but it has to loft to trap the heat. The insulation underneath would be flattened, which would not produce any kind of warmth. If it gets wet, it would become useless. So they would not work well for hiking boots, but they do work well for camp footwear because they're lightweight, packable, but you would have to still need some type of shell around them and another type of insulation underneath. Ignore manufacturing temperature ratings, except for the certain models in the same company as a guideline. They are almost always overly optimistic. Now the first big mistake people often make is buying a boot that's too tight or snug on their feet. Now the heel should not move up and down as you walk, but the boot shouldn't be so tightly fitted that it restricts the blood flow which causes frozen toes. Once laced up you should be able to wiggle your toes freely inside the boot and the area on top of your boot should not be so tight that it impedes circulation. Now some of the reasons why this happened and number one is some of the boot company sizes may run larger or smaller. You may buy a boot over the internet and it comes to your door, you try it on and it's either too large or too small. It could be even too narrow or too wide. I suggest that you go to a specialty store, try the different boots from different manufacturers, try it on, walk around and find the boot that fits best for you and you'll be surprised that the boot you may pick might not even been on your radar. Now the second reason why this may happen is because when people go buy a boot at a specialty store, they have their everyday sock on, they try the boot on, they walk around and they purchase the boot that fits perfectly. And then when winter comes, they go outside in that cold weather, then they put on this thick wool sock on and the boot is tight and it cuts off the circulation and they end up with cold toes. When trying on new boots, always bring the thickest pair of socks that you would wear in the winter time. Now the third case why this happens, and this is a big one, when it's cold outside, people think if I put on an extra pair of sock or another pair of sock, my feet will be warm. And again, that causes the boot to be tight and cuts off the circulation and does the opposite. Instead of keeping it warm, it'll make it colder because you want a little bit of space inside so it can retain the heat inside your boot. Now, another reason why you don't want your boot snug or tight is when you come into camp and your feet get cold, you can always put in these hand warmers or feet warmer. Now the second tip I'd like to share with you is when you're standing for a long period of time or even sitting with your feet on that cold ground, you want to put something between your boot and the cold ground. Now I know this person that teaches cold weather camp and he told me a story of a police officer that came to him and said while working security at a popular nightclub on the weekend, four hours a night, during the cold weather temperature, his feet were freezing and he was afraid of frostbite. He said that his boots were loose fitting and they're rated for cold weather temperature. But my friend told him the problem is the cold was coming up from the bottom of his feet from standing on that cold concrete. And he said the solution to that is to put something in between the cold concrete and your boot. And he said a closed foam mat, cut a section out of that and stand on it and that should solve your problem. The police officer was a little reluctant to try it, but the next time he seen him, the police officer told him how well it worked. You can purchase a foam mat in any department store and they're fairly inexpensive. Measure out a piece around 18 inches or 45 centimeters square. Then use a scissors or a knife to cut out. Any foam will work, but closed cell foam is more supple and easy for packing. Another tip for stopping the cold from coming up from underneath your boot is putting in another insole like wool. Another trick is using reflectic insulation, which you can find in most department or hardware stores. First, you need to take out your insole from your boot, 
Take it and put it upside down for easy sketching. Then take a marker and draw close around them. Then cut them out. It's best to put them underneath your insole for comfort. You only put the extra insoles in your boots when you're done hiking and you come into camp or you have downtime. If the extra insole is snug or tight, then don't use them. Just use the mat underneath your feet when sitting or standing for long periods of time. Now the third tip I'd like to share with you is when you're backpacking, hiking, or camping for multiple days, you want to wear some type of vapor barrier inside your boot. Last year, Runner and I did a winter trek up in the BWCA for eight days, and after three days of hiking and pulling that poke behind me, my feet were wet from sweat. At nighttime, we would get a fire, and I'd put my boot over the fire and hold it for over an hour, and I could never get it completely dry because the heat wouldn't get up to that toe area, and my toes were always cold. Now, if you're going on a trip that consists of multiple days, you may want to consider some type of vapor barrier. I remember as a kid, my mom would take a bread bag, slide it over my foot, and slide it into the boot. And this was supposed to keep my feet dry from the slushy and my boot getting wet. A vapor barrier is totally the opposite. It's supposed to keep your boot dry and the moisture inside the vapor barrier. Now there's many items you can use for a vapor barrier, like a bread bag or any type of bag that's plastic and long and narrow. I really do not recommend that you use the bags from the department stores or grocery stores because they're very thin and they tear very easily and plus they're not long enough they need to be tall if you plan on doing a winter trek now or in the future it'd be wise to invest in a pair of vapor barrier socks now these vapor barrier socks are from a company called Rab and they're about 25 to 35 dollars Your feet are the second sweatiest part of your body after the armpit. This means that your feet produces a considerable amount of moisture during the course of a winter hike, especially if you're working hard. All that moisture is then absorbed into your socks and your footwear, then leaving your sock and footwear soaked after a long hike. And damp socks and footwear will chill your feet when cooling down. First, you wanna put on a pair of thin synthetic liner socks like these socks, they're dress socks from Gold Toes. Synthetic socks dry quickly, they prevent blisters and odor. Next you put on the Vapor Barrier Sock. Then add a thick wool sock over top. But make sure the socks are not too thick to make your boots snug or tight. Now no foot sweat will enter your thick sock or your footwear. Now you may think that by trapping moisture next to your feet would lead to a soaking, skin pruning environment as sweat pours from your feet, but it doesn't. The reason why is your skin is constantly producing a significant amount of moisture to keep it adequately moist. And this is called insensible perspiration. However, if the skin senses that it's adequately moist, it ceases this insensible perspiration because it's no longer needed. And that's exactly what happens inside your vapor barrier socks. Your feet actually start sweating less because the environment around them are already significantly moist. After a long day of hiking, Remove your boot, take off your wool sock, then take off the vapor barrier sock and turn inside out to dry. Then remove your liner sock to dry also. Then put back on the wool sock which is dry and the dry boot also. Now you have a nice dry pair of boots and socks to keep you nice and warm for the rest of the day. When you wake up the next morning to continue your trek, you'll want to wipe out the moisture that turned to frost, then turn them inside right, then you're ready to go. 
Now these are just some of the tips to help keep your feet warm during the cold winter months. If you have any tips you'd like to share or if you have any questions or comments, please write them down below because I'd love to hear from you. This is the Marine with Backpacking with a Hammock. Thank you for watching and God bless.